teaching you the basics of user management in Jira. This is not for users that are using Atlassian Axes. This is a very basic for users, for companies that are just trying to manage their users, but they're not doing any SSO. They're not doing anything fancy like that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you drop a like. And if you have any questions about anything that I cover in the video, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Jira. Okay, so to manage your users in Jira, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to the right-hand side and click on the little gear. Now, keep in mind that to be able to do any of this, you're gonna have to be either an org admin or a site admin. A Jira admin or below is not gonna be enough permission power to be able to do this. So you need to be at a minimum a site administrator in the cloud. So once you come to this little gear, you're gonna click on user management and this is gonna take you to a new URL. Please notice that we have been redirected. We actually are not in Jira anymore. And this is usually where new administrators to the cloud get tripped up a little bit, especially when they're coming from the server version of Jira. Because over there, you manage your users, your Jira users within the Jira interface. But here, you actually leave Jira, you leave your site's Jira instance, and you're actually on a new URL, and it's named at admin.atlassian.com. So you'll notice up here, we're at a whole different location. Now, depending on the version of cloud that you're in, and I know this is kind of a weird thing, but I've worked on different Juras that have just a different interface here. Why Atlassian doesn't have a consistent interface, I haven't quite figured out just yet, but I'm gonna show you based on my interface, which I think is a newer, more modern interface that most teams are using anyways. So this is the interface basically where you manage your users. You'll notice you're under directory and you're under users. A couple of things that I wanted to kind of show you here. So if you want to add new people to your organization, that's really easy. All you got to do is come in and invite users and you can add them here. I don't know what the limit is. I've seen 10 to be the limit. So you may only be able to do 10 at a time, but you can basically add folks here, separate them using a comma, Note that you can't send them out to distribution list, so be careful there. So if you're adding like 100 new people, you're gonna be here for a while. And so you're just gonna essentially add the person's email. Now that's just to send the invitation to the right person. There's a couple of other things that you need to do down here. Down here, you need to determine what kind of access you're gonna give them. This part is very, very important because when you're selecting your options here, this is essentially when you're effectively buying a user's license. And as you know, Atlassian charges by the product, and so your Jira software is going to be one cost and your Confluence is gonna be another cost. You don't have to pay extra for to be a Jira admin, but this is where you would indicate if somebody has administrative privileges in Jira. Please note that even if you give them product admin here, this is not gonna give them the ability to like add users because they're not gonna be a site admin. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a couple seconds, so stay tuned for that, okay? But essentially, you're gonna put somebody's name here, put whatever email you want. So I'm just gonna put an email. Let's see, let me put something here, okay? And then I'm going to essentially select what kind of role I wanna give them. I don't have a lot of roles in my instance, but if you have different roles, you would select whether you want them to be a user, a developer, whatever roles and options you have available to you. Confluence behaves a little bit different. Confluence, you're actually gonna be able to determine if you make them an admin here as well, or if you just want them to be a user. And then Jira administration, for whatever reason, is broken down into its own category, and this is where you would select if this person becomes an admin or not. Once you do that, that's essentially the very first like critical thing you need to figure out and fill out so that a user can be essentially given the ability to potentially see one of these products. The next step is important as well. Now you're adding them into groups. So by default, when you add them to this Jira software user group, they're gonna be added to the, whatever name of your thing is called, Jira software dash users, name, the name of your instance, they're automatically gonna be added to that. But if you wanted to add them to a different group, maybe you know that this particular user needs uh, specific access to a very specific project, you might just be able to add them to that group now. In this video, we're not gonna be talking about groups, but in a future video, we are definitely gonna be addressing the differences between just having users versus having users in groups 
versus putting people in teams. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a like so that way you're notified of these videos when they drop. But for now, just we're not going to add them to any special groups and we are not going to personalize the invitation. You can personalize the invitation here and basically I have a special message for you. Now I will go back. If you want this user to be a site admin, that means they're going to be able to add users. You make sure you add them to the site admins group here. And then that's pretty much it. At this point, you can just hit invite users and that's it. They'll get a notification. They'll get an email from the system. It'll have a link. It'll redirect them back to Jira. And based on whatever settings you set up here, that's what's going to be sent to them. Now it's not pictured here, but in some instances, I want you to be very mindful in some instances, especially when you're like in a larger organization, when you add a domain email here, so let's just say that you put your company's email here, there's going to be like another little checkbox that says automatically allow folks with that email to be added to your Jira. Be very, very careful with selecting this because this basically means that whenever somebody joins your, that gets an email for your company, and this is very true when you're using like SSO and, and Atlassian Access, but essentially whenever somebody joins your company, Jira is going to be out of the kindness of their heart automatically at that user. And you don't always want every user to have a Jira license because they can get up to $14 and 50 cents a user. Be very careful with that selecting that checkbox. It's not shown here, but be careful because this is a very easy way to get these shadow IT or very inflated Atlassian bills because pretty much every user is automatically being added to your instance. So you want to be very careful with that and, and make sure that you are mindful there. Next, another little thing that I want to show you now, we're outside the invite users. We just finished inviting our users. A couple of other things I want to show you here. One, you can export all your users here and this will generate a CSV file. You have a couple of options. You got to pick, well, what kind of, which users do I want? Do I want all the users? Those in just a specific group. Maybe I want all the users, regardless if they're still active or not, or maybe I just want the active users. And then you can also bring in the product, the extra groups where I'll tell you what group they belong to, what kind of access they have and all that good stuff. So these are just different options that you have because every once in a while you are going to want to audit your groups and your users because your Atlassian bill has the potential to balloon itself quite rapidly, especially as more and more and more users come into your instance, you're going to get popularity and these bills are just going to, they're going to exponentially go up. So every once in a while, I recommend at least every 90 days, you're going to want to come in here and start deactivating folks that haven't used Jira. Now, the easiest way to know when a user was active or not is if you come here, you'll see a last active for every single user. And so you can just basically go down the list. It's a bit of a manual work, but I've done, I don't know, maybe 200 users in like 30 minutes. So it's not too bad. And it just kind of scales from there, but it's very, very quick. You just kind of keep an eyeball. Anybody that hasn't been active in, since like 2021, that's usually an easy one to go find. Anybody that hasn't logged in, I typically use 90 days, but I'm just counting three months back. So basically anybody before May is automatically, I'm going to click on them and I'm going to be removing their access. So to remove access from somebody, there's a couple of things in play. So they can actually just have access to your organization. I won't be able to do it here because I'm the site administrator, but they can have access to your administration. Or when you see the products, you're going to see what products they belong to. You can just remove them from that um, group. And when you remove them from that group, which is usually going to be the Jira dash users group or the Confluence dash users group. If you remove them from that group, then they inadvertently lose their access at that point. And when they lose that access, not only are they just losing access, but they're also not being counted for your bill anymore. And so that's a really good thing from a product to product perspective, right? Because you could pay for them to be in Jira, but not Confluence or vice versa. So that's kind of what you're going to want to do. I'm obviously a bad example here because I'm just a team of one in my instance, but you would have these different products and you would essentially just remove them from the Jira dash users group or the Confluence dash users group, and then you'd be able to manage it from there. Now, I am going to point you here to wrap up this video quite long on this one. I do want to tell you that if you go to the uh, Atlassian documentation, you can just put manage users in Jira. You're going to be redirected here to the Jira cloud administrators. Got a link for this in the description of this video, and you'll be able to see how you can monitor the activity, how you can delete them, manage the project roles. And so you'll be able to see some of the official documentation on how to do these things. I'm going to do a video where I'm just going to compare groups and users and teams 
And so make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a like so that you're following along the, the road show here. But um, that's pretty much gonna be it for this one. I'll drop this resource, check out this video. Hopefully the interface is like yours. If you have a different interface, the same logic applies. It's just gonna be in a slightly different place, but it's not like it's night and day. It's still gonna be very, very similar to just things are gonna be in a slightly different area. I just unfortunately don't have access to that. So I can't really do the video there. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure you subscribe, drop a like if you got any value. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks.